So we'll go in here to form load. And we'll say gstring name is equal to Zach. Message box gstring name. Zach. Okay. Now, what about if we use a different form? Let's go over here and add a new form. And we'll go ahead and uh, use a bu this button to get to that form. To do this, we would use unload me, but we need to load the other form too. The unload me is going to unload this form. Um, that form is called form2.show. And then unload me. Okay. Once we click that button. Um, when we come in here to form 2, go to view code on form 2, we just want a message box. And it's going to say Zach, just to show you that the variable is is being used in both these forms, but it, it's in the module. Um, so we hit and hit play. Zach. And then when I go to the other form, Zach. Now, just a little bit of help on this. Um, it's better to use a module than it is to add public in your form. So for instance, you could have option explicit here. And we could have gstring different name as string. But to use that, we have to call that, uh, or excuse me, we have to reference to this, um, and it's within a form. Now that's going to cause some problems. So let's go over here and see if I want to use that. Go message box. It's not going to work. Um, it doesn't show any sign of, of of it going in properly, but if I put form one dot and then I can see the variable, um, that would work. But this presents a problem. One, if that form form one is not open, and I message box this variable, it will open form one because it needs to reload that a uh, public variable. Um, that could be a problem if you have code in here, let's say, on the form load. Well, this is going to go off. Um, so gstring would be back to Zach, um, and it'll be a message box. And we didn't really want to see that. And so, as you can see, this presents a problem if you're using public variables within a form, and you should really just put your public variables within the um, module. Otherwise, if you don't need a public variable, don't use one. Just declare it within the scope, use it for private, um, up in the option explicit. Okay, quickly I'm going to go over arrays. Um, we're going to use option explicit here. And then we're going to do some declaring. And we want to go private. Now with an array, you would start with an A for a prefix. Um, we'll use string. And we'll just call it um, names. As an example, um, and then we have open parentheses, and from what number to what number? Um, really, you'll want to look up the de the definition of array. Um, but for now, it's basically we can there are elements within the uh, the memory, and it's going to be under this same variable name. But to reference them, we use numbers. Um, arrays start at zero initially but we can start at whatever we'd like to use. So for instance, we can say 1 to 10 as string. And what this does is now now we can um, access this array that we declared. And um, whichever element that we want to work with, let's say the first one, and set it equal to hi. Um, that's not a name, excuse me, let's use David. And then again.
begin names. Joe. And we can continue this on. Um, names. Three. Uh, Jeff. Um, and in my next video, I'm going to show you a little bit more about the arrays and how to loop through them. Um, but this is how you would declare them. Again, if you just put this as nine, that's going to be from zero to nine, which is actually ten elements, um, the same as one to ten. And that's going to conclude my video for now. Um, check me out on my next video for um, loops and how to use these um, arrays more efficiently and how to, how to see them as static and dynamic and I'll explain that a little bit too. Um, so that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and until next time.